友咧嚟到今日，社區發展動力同浸會大學嘅過渡期計劃，即係一齊搞嘅呢個嘅誒、呃、電話調查計劃嘅報告嘅發布會。咁我哋一年都做好多次嘅咁樣嘅電話調查嘅，基本上個方向咧都係想探討。即、就、係、是、香港人對政府啦、對政黨啦、同對唔同嘅社會時事議題嘅啲睇法，咁其實你見到誒、呃、過往即係可能又嚟過我哋呢個記者招待會嘅嘅傳媒朋友咧，都會知道好詳盡嘅好多問題，亦都你見到個 report 咧，每一次都上到寫到詳細，所以亦都需要啲時間去預備嘅。所以每一次通常我哋做完一個電話調查，都需要誒、呃、數星期以上嘅時間咧去寫呢個報告。咁所以變咗嗰個嘅。引申出嚟嘅結論咧，同埋應用都好多嚇。雖然好似係時間上隔多幾個禮拜咁樣，但係引申出嚟嗰個應用可以好多。咁所以變咗我哋就每一次都係希望可以用一個小時個半鐘咁樣去一齊傾一傾呢一個咁嘅調查嘅狀況。咁啊，今日我哋即係繼續好榮幸咧，就有啊 Michael De Gruyere 即係大高麗博士咧去講解即係嗰個嘅報告嗰個嘅背景。咁啊，亦都會有啊。就阿 George Cotley 咧，啊，即係社區發展動力嘅成員咧，去講一講，即係通常每一件每一個嘅研究報告嘅嗰個背景啊，嗰、那個嘅少少嘅簡介咁樣嚇。咁啊，大家如果嚟過都知道啦。通常我哋除咗啲最基本嘅關於報告嘅介紹，同埋啲數據分析咧，就會有幾位嘅所謂我哋叫做即係評論嘅朋友嚇。咁今次我哋好榮幸請到三位嘅評論朋友嘅嚇。第一位咧就係、是、社區發展動力。培育嘅成員啦，善從佳啦，咁佢都係前立法會議員啦嚇。咁啊，應該佢會講一講，即係點樣睇，即係誒個報告裏邊誒講市民對政府嘅觀感，對政黨嘅觀感。咁第二位咧，亦都係另一位社區發展動力嘅成員，就係、是、陳家樂博士，佢亦都係浸會大學嘅副教授。咁佢而家係嚟緊啊，咁所以我哋開始住先。咁第三位咧就係、是、大家都好熟悉噶啦，就係、是、阿夫子劉瑞兆。咁佢係時事評論員啦。咁佢誒有有有個 meeting 嘅，佢應該係遲半個鐘頭到都會嚟。咁所以我就將個時間就交俾阿高德禮博士阿 George Cotley 咧，去講一講個簡單嘅介紹嘅關於呢、這個呢、這個報告。誒、uh, ，Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming.、Um, CDI is happy once again to be Uh, supporting the Hong Kong Transition Project in another of its regular surveys.、Um, I think what is、uh, sets aside the Hong Kong Transition Project surveys is that of the surveys that are done on a regular basis,、uh, the Hong Kong Transition Projects are by far the most detailed in terms of the demographic information that they capture. Uh, from the respondents to the surveys, and this then enables a very detailed analysis、uh, of the people who are responding and how they are, what their backgrounds are, because、uh, they can be analysed very simply by male or female, but also by age group, by income group, by occupation,、um, and all these have a very useful. Uh, uh, Impact、uh, on trying to assess why people have certain opinions and who are likely to have these opinions, and also,、uh, although the membership of political parties is very small, when you come to an election, a lot of people vote. So there are a, a very large number of people who support political parties at election time. And another of the ways that the transition project analyzes the responses is. Uh, how people who support different political parties also respond to various issues, and as today we have got、uh, two of our commentators from、uh, two of the major political parties,、um, I think、uh, the information that Hong Kong Transition Project provides is very, very valuable indeed to them, because again, because our political parties are so small in actual membership. Um, it's quite possible that sometimes they can misunderstand what the public at large, in in in、uh, the, the way of voters, is thinking. So maybe your own close、uh, members think、uh, or have an opinion or a particular opinion、uh, on an issue,、um, but the people who are going to vote for you. Uh, maybe have a slightly different opinion or a very different opinion, and it's very important for the political parties to be aware of this, because in the end, they're not so much appealing to their own direct members; they're appealing to 
the electorate at large, and it's very important to understand uh, how the electorate thinks of things. And these are very valuable uh, pieces of information that the Hong Kong Transition Project provides uh, to anyone who takes the trouble uh, to um, really study their reports. So now I'd like to hand over to Michael de Gaulier and uh, let's hear what he has to uh, tell us from the April survey. Thank you, George. As you probably know, we have a number of elections coming up in Hong Kong. We have the district council elections. We have the elections for the chief executive election committee. We have the elections for the chief executive. And then we have the elections for LegCo, all happening within a little over 12 months uh, time period, about uh, 15, 16 months uh, from now. Uh, but we also have some other things about elections. Uh, and I have to uh, thank Stephen Lamb for his uh, thoughtful timing, yes, uh, of the by-election bill. Uh, other elections, uh, which has become a large controversy at this point. Keep the IR port open here. Uh, and as you are no doubt aware, there are a lot of questions and queries about this by-election bill, what the government is intending to do. Uh, some people are interpreting it and calling it an attack on the concept of elections and the practice of elections. Other people talk about it as an attack on the right to vote. Um, there's certainly been some questions raised about why the police have been making demonstration organizing more difficult. And I'm sure that you guys in the, in the media are going to hear more about this tomorrow. There's also a question about in terms of this disrespect for legislators causing disrespect for the government or fostering disrespect among the people. And some questions then about just is our demonstration uh, tomorrow going to be as peaceful as demonstrations in the past. Uh, because we've seen over the last uh, about a year or so now uh, an increasing uh, frustration, I think is the best way to describe it in the population. So let's just take a quick, brief look at why we have elections. It, it is an expensive practice in some ways. Uh, but as Winston Churchill once said about democracy, it is less expensive than other ways of doing things. <laughs> uh, and you can check with the folks in Syria or Egypt or Libya about this, all right? Uh, effectively, in terms of what elections do, they not only offer choices to people, but they also demand choices. And this is very important. They demand that people choose, okay? And this is a crucial component. They involve people. They provide mandates for action, okay? Uh, government has a mandate if it runs on a platform or runs on a promise to do something, okay? It's a chance to either ratify or reject these leaders and programs and parties, okay? This is the point. And folks like Sin Chun Kai have to have pretty tough skin uh, to get out there and face rejection as well as applause, all right? And this is just the nature of, of politics. That's what it is. It focuses attention on issues of the day, okay? And what the people are demanding and questions that are of uh, bothering the community. But the other thing that it also does, and this is a crucial component here, is that elections promote participation. They promote people to get outside of their own areas of interest and to begin to cooperate with others so they can build enough votes to win. You have to cooperate as well as compete. That's a key thing about elections as well. And finally, the, key, the most important thing, and this is really a crucial thing I want to emphasize, is that elections and parties and the whole electoral process basically allows people who are frustrated and saying, I want to do something, pick up the phone instead of pick up a rock. Okay? They get in contact with people and say, what can I do to help? Do you need money? Do you need volunteers? Can I make phone calls, et cetera? That is a positive response, not a negative response. And when you see something like this, what you see is not disorder. What you see is an orderly channeling of frustrations. And if you look at these folks in the march, I think this was last year or year before last, you can see people marching who are happy. Yes, there's some folks are serious, but there are also people who are smiling there's a sense of participation and, indeed, a sense of relief. And this is an orderly march, okay? They were all moving 
in an orderly manner. So, in this report, we focused on elections and the process of elections. Uh, that was the intent. It was conducted the last 10 days of April. Uh, and I just have to thank Stephen Lamb for so exquisitely timing his by-election bill. Right? And so we asked people this time, if you could vote, who would you vote for as chief executive? Now, the difference is, those of you who were here last time we released our report from December, you know we asked people if they supported being a candidate or not. And what we were doing in that first thing in December is determining is there support for a contested election. And since you had a majority of people supporting at least two candidates and close to a majority for a third candidate, it's pretty easy to extrapolate that people support a contested election. Okay. Secondly, we noted that there were more positive views of Fan and Tang than there were negative views. And more positive views of these two than of the other two. All right? That's what the December election told us. This survey was different. And in the past, this question has been asked, but it was asked in a completely uh, hypothetical situation, if you could vote, kind of in general. And you'll notice this time we said, in light of direct elections for chief executive in 2017. That's the promise. That's what Beijing has promised. It's more concrete now. I know Kenneth is skeptical about whether or not we're going to have a CE election in 2017, but we're going on the promise, so we wanted to make it more concrete this time. All right? And it, what was really interesting to me was when we made it concrete like this, you can see we have some pretty serious assessments of these folks. Now, we took the don't knows uh, uh, out in, in the uh, uh, red part of this, and you can see we still don't have a majority. We don't have a clear majority for any candidate. There is no consensus at the moment. Now, the key thing to point out, like we pointed out with elections and the purpose of elections, if you don't have a consensus on a candidate or a program, you actually don't have a mandate. Okay? And uh, Donald John got a mandate to get the job done. We were, we've all been trying to figure out what job that was. <laughs> okay? And I think if you look at these results, one thing you can draw from them is that we need a genuine election campaign for chief executive. Even if the people in general can't vote, we need a campaign, a, co a, a competitive campaign, a campaign in which candidates come out with specific promises and specific platforms so that we can find out, we can get a mandate, get a clear choice. All right? Now let's take a look at crunching some of this data just a little bit to figure out, is there actually kind of a, uh, a lean towards certain kinds of candidates? If we can't tell exactly who people favor or a majority favor, is there a majority who favor a certain type of candidate? So what we did was we divided up the folks who had uh, executive experience and the folks who had only legislative experience. Okay, so Audrey Yu, Rita Fan. Alan Leung, okay, and others, people like Raymond Wong and Leung Kwa Kung. This is only executive experience. And what's interesting is we find a majority preferring candidates who have legislative experience only, not just executive experience, okay. And it's even more telling when you put it in terms of elected candidates, in this case including um, uh, Anson Chan and Virginia Yip, they've been elected, versus candidates who have never faced an election. And you can see that there is a dominant, overwhelming preference for candidates who have faced the voters. Okay? Now, this is what you can tell when you work with statistics. I know some of you guys are only interested in numbers if it's on your bank statement. Okay? But there's a lot of cool stuff in numbers if you dig around in it, all right? For example, people who are registered as voters, a majority of them prefer somebody who has elect legislative experience and legislative experience only. Folks who are not registered to vote, about 25%, a majority of them do not, okay? 
And what's also really interesting, and you guys I know are going to be not very pleased about this, the folks in the Democratic Party and the Civic Party, but if one reason why people like Stephen Lamb are opposing elections is because they're afraid that a pan-democrat will be favored, well, the data doesn't support that. In fact, it's almost the opposite of the usual pattern. Usually when we have elections in Hong Kong, 58 to 60 percent vote for pan-democratic candidates in the, in the geographic elections. But this time we've got about 63, 64 percent who favor one of these establishment candidates like Tang, Fan, Yip, or Leung, Siwai Leung, Leung Cheng Ying, rather than one of the pan-democratic candidates. And, perhaps the most interesting of all, men versus women. You've probably already seen it. There is a vast preference for a woman over a man. Okay? So, yes. <laughs> it's, it's all men up here. We need a woman up here, okay, uh, to talk about this. It's a very good point. Okay. All right, you need a woman. Either that or someone like Henry Tang needs an operation. All right, so let's take a look at popular support uh, for chief executive in terms of the party preferences, some of the stuff that George was talking about. Now this is our first survey since the LSD split. And you can see this is the split. Now if you go through the data, you can see last time it was about 7% uh, who said the LSD was the party that best represented them, okay, or best protected their interest. The split has hurt because it's only about 2% now between the two groups, the splinter faction. Uh, and it's had some further effect on, in terms of, of party choice as well. We had a clear majority of people who said a party represented them last time. This time we have just under a majority. Okay? So the splintering of the parties and the infighting is not healthy for the parties. Also, what's really interesting in terms of, of party preferences, uh, this is by occupations. And you'll note, for example, that no one who is a manager or administrator, and this is business-oriented folks, okay, none of them say the LSD represents them. None of them say the FTU represents them. None of them say the CTU represents them. Okay. The significance of this is that Hong Kong people, when they say a party represents or, or protects their interest best, at least when it comes to business people, they know what they're talking about. Okay? They are t making choices and the party structure images are beginning to coalesce in a logical kind of way. Okay? So people are beginning to think about what a party stands for, what a party represents, who a party tracks, what interests they protect. This is, this is what we look for in terms of what Donald Trump talked about in terms of maturity, in terms of a political system that is developing, in terms of people who not only deserve democracy but can practice democracy, because democracy is about choices. So when we face people with choices about parties, they're clearly beginning to choose parties that represent them. Now notice the DAB, for example, has hardly any students. The LSD is heavily attractive to students. And in terms of ages, note this, the LSD, the faction, the people under 30, if there's a youth party in Hong Kong, that's it. And if there's not a youth party in Hong Kong, it's probably the DAB, because you can see the ages tend to be older down here, very small number of people under age 30. So when the DAB talks about having a problem of transition to younger leadership, yes, they have a problem of transition to younger leadership. Okay? They know what they're talking about. Okay? So these kinds of, this kind of data begins to tell you quite a lot about what's happening in our society. Also, what's of interest is that more males than females say a party best represents their interest, paying more attention to what's going on uh, in terms of their choices uh, by sex. And what's also interesting is that males prefer the civic party <laughs> over females. You can see the proportions. Okay. 
so you guys have a, a sex problem. You're not attracting enough women. I, I say this to Kenneth because he has four daughters. <laughs> okay, so the idea that Kenneth has a female problem is, well, maybe that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And in terms of party preference by voter registration, you can see that of those people who are registered to vote in the geographic or functional constituencies, again, it's a majority. People who are registered to vote, a majority of those folks know what's going on. So when we talk about popular preferences, the parties have, a, in a sense, a popular mandate in that they represent a majority of opinion of people who are actually interested in voting, registered to vote participating in the society. So, this breaks down each of the candidates by these people who say this party best represents us. And we try to put it together and what we were looking for is, is there a clear relationship between a candidate and a party or a group of parties? And the only one that comes close is Alan Leung who ran as the chief executive candidate of the pan-democratic camp last time. He's the only one that, that has a, a clearer tie, even though you'll notice some people who say the DAB best represents them also support Alan Neng, and a few up here who say the FTU best represents them also support Alan Neng. Okay, a few. All right. But when you start breaking it down in the other groups, and like Henry Tang, you don't even have a majority of people who say a party represents them supporting Henry Tang. He's the party of none of the above. And what was the question again? <laughs> don't know. Okay? Uh, this is not a strong mandate to build on either. This turns it around. In this case, we look at the people who say a party represents them, and we look in terms of which candidates proportionately they support. So again, when we look at this, we find that there is not a particular candidate who is supported by, unanimously by a party. There's not a majority of support. We do know clearly that people in the People Power Party do not support Henry Tang at all. Nobody indicated him from that group. Now, it's a small group, 2%, remember. So it's not much of a loss. And when you start looking in terms of occupation, there's not a, a clear business candidate. You might say the clerks, that Rita Fand is the candidate of the clerks and housewives, which is an interesting thing, and the unemployed. Not quite sure why. There it is. And by age group, it's really interesting that the only age group that gives Henry Tang a significant proportion of support are teenagers. And we all know about teenagers. All right. So is there a candidate who is a candidate of the patriotic camp? Well, when you ask people how they feel on October 1st, all the folks who said they were proud and excited on October 1st, is there a clear candidate? Not a majority for anybody. Okay, you can see it very much split. So the argument that there is a, a patriotic camp or a loyalist camp candidate versus another candidate is not sustained, at least in the data so far. It might develop that way, but it's not there yet. And by education, what's also interesting is that you can see a clear correlation as education goes up, support for Henry Tang goes down. That's the clearest correlation. There's a secondary one, if you take CY Leung out of here and clean this chart up, and you put the two civic party legislators, Alan Leung and Audrey Yu together, you can see that as education goes up, there's a tendency for support for those two to go up. Okay, so there's an inverse correlation. As education goes up, support for Tang goes down, support for the civic party folks goes up. All right, I bring this up because, as you know, the government also has decided to um, attack, shall we call it, the rural sector, okay? 
But Henry Tang, as the Chief Secretary for Administration, also has problems with private renters and home ownership scheme people. And those of you know that there's quite a bit of controversy going on about the home ownership scheme and housing, okay? But I think that this number is going to go down <laughs> rather dramatically fairly soon in terms of what's happening with the government, especially if they pursue things. All right. Please note that satisfaction with Donald Jung's performance is now at an all-time dissatisfaction, at an all-time peak, okay? And whenever you compare that, now notice, this is just under 60%, about 59%. When you compare that to the Chief Secretary for Administration, you'll notice that his isn't quite that bad, but almost. It's definitely a majority who are dissatisfied with his performance as well. So this gets into the question of if Tang succeeds Donald Jung, are things going to get better? I don't think so. And so we look at this, comparative satisfaction. So if you look in terms of who represents best and their satisfaction versus dissatisfaction with Donald Jung, and compare that to Henry Tang, it's very difficult to see a lot of difference. Notice, for example, that with the DAB, it's almost exactly the same number. Okay? And if you compare it only with one party, is there really a significant difference? The Liberal Party, and Henry Tang used to be a member of the Liberal Party. Okay? But even there, he's dealing with about 40% who are dissatisfied with him. Let's take another comparison by income group. Donald Jung on the left, Henry Tang on the right. If you can see any significant difference, please let me know. Okay? It's just not there. All right? So if you're changing chief executive to try to improve your relationship with society, at least in terms of income groups, you're not going to get much change by changing these two. All right, so how are we doing overall then? I think the main reason is we have a real problem with satisfaction with the performance of the Hong Kong government and both Donald Jung and Henry Tang are seen inseparably as tied to this government. And this government is getting increasingly uh, uh, or, or experiencing increasingly a sense of dissatisfaction, all right? And in terms of satisfaction, this is a new peak. With life in Hong Kong, note also that this is a peak under Donald Jung. Again, all right? So this is, this is back, this is right in the 2003 period. This is a survey that was done in June 2003. This was done at the end of April in 2003. Given what the government has been doing, I can virtually guarantee you, and I'd be willing to take any bet you would be willing to raise, that this is up at this point, right at the June 2003 mark. It's also one reason why I would be shocked if there were less than 100,000 people tomorrow, and not at all surprised if there was over 200,000. All right? I would not be surprised. I'm not saying there's going to be, but I not, would not be surprised at all. All right. By income group, also note that the satisfaction with the government is not the poor. When we talk about the wealth gap, we're not talking about these folks being angry. We're talking about these folks being angry folks that you would consider rich or upper middle class, okay? All right? And whenever you break it down by party group and you put them all together, the pro-government groups like the DAB and FTU and the Liberal Party and the pan-democratic groups, and I put LSD and People's Power together, I know they hate that, but I put them together, 
and you'll find that there's a large block of folks in the so-called pro-government group. You're getting close, when you take the don't knows out, you're getting very, very close to a majority of the pro-government group being dissatisfied with the performance of the government. Now that's not a good stance for a pro-government group. And notice what people are upset about. And this is the key thing. This is an open-ended question we ask. And we've been asking it. This, this shows you the chart back to January. Now please note, in January, almost nobody was concerned about inflation. By the time we get to April, over, just over a year later, a lot of people are concerned about inflation. Notice also about the wealth gap. This has been a continuing issue that actually has increased from December to April, the wealth gap. And the affordable housing and property market, not a big issue in January 2010, a very big issue in April 2011. And this is all open-ended. We do not prompt for this. We just ask, which problem of Hong Kong most concerns you now? And when we ask them, are you satisfied with the government's performance on this problem? You'll notice there's this wonderful, sunny little group that doesn't have any problems. And others who say that the government can't do anything about it. It's not their, their problem. But about two-thirds say they're dissatisfied. And a big chunk of these folks say they're very dissatisfied with the government's performance. All right. Specifically, what are people dissatisfied with? Number one, addressing the wealth gap. Three out of four. Increasing affordable housing, almost the same amount. Handling the budget, 60%. And you'll see some more in just a moment about that. And improving medical services. All of these are over 50%. Consulting the public, over 50%. You have majorities dissatisfied with every one of these issues. And I guarantee you this one on consulting the public is larger today than it was at the end of April. Again, I've been doing this for 20 years in Hong Kong. So. And when we asked people specifically, we wanted to check on this. Which do you most prefer to spend the budget surplus money on? Do you want it in your pocket? Notice this is under 1 in 10 who say, yeah, we want the $6,000. What do they want the government to do? Well, they want it to address the wealth gap. They want it to increase the supply of affordable housing. They want it to improve medical services. In other words, they don't want the money in their pocket. They want the government to do its job. All right? And you're talking about roughly three quarters of people here wanting the government to do it. The biggest next group is caring for the elderly. All right? People in Hong Kong don't want the money given to them. They're not looking for a handout. They're looking for action. They want a government that acts, that governs. All right? Now, when we ask about fairness, and, and it was really interesting, I heard William Hutton on the way over on BBC talking about, ex talking about the Middle East and what was all going on there. And he brought up the issue of fairness as a crucial one. For, for those societies, and he said for any society, the issue of fairness. And when we ask this question, we, we just get this overwhelming response that people think the government is making decisions unfairly. And you'll notice we spell this out very clearly how we ask this question. All right? And we added a new question this time about whether people had ever engaged in a consultation. About 8% had engaged in a consultation. And then we had a follow-up question, you know, to everybody. How seriously do you think the government takes public views in these consultation exercises? Now, these are the 8% who participated. These are all the other folks who did not. This is the average of the two put together. Please notice that while there is a slight increase of satisfaction in terms of serious consideration or very serious consideration, among the 8% who participated, there's also a rather considerable increase of no consideration at all of people who have participated. So we have these two groups, people who basically watch from the outside and people who have been in the room. And the people who have been in the room, in terms of intensity, 
many of them are really upset about this. So we have been saying for years the government needs to improve its consultation process. Let me reiterate this. The government needs to improve its consultation process. All right, that's what the data shows, as fairly as we can make it. All right, we go back to this question of fairness, and we tie it in this time to budget issues. Okay, this is a survey following the budget, budget debate, big budget controversy. That's whenever we conducted our regular surveys, we do that, and we do it in the fall after the chief executive's policy address. And you'll notice that there is far more people who say direct elections would make taxes and expenditures fairer and say it would make it less fair. And if you dig into that report, you can find out who these folks are. They're not who you may think they are. Okay. It's not necessarily the wealthy who think it would make it less fair. And the same thing about the chief executive, and it's even more remarkable in terms of the contrast between the groups saying less fair, more fair. Okay. Of course, we do have a cynical group in the middle, like Kenneth, who say it won't make any difference. <laughs> Actually, I don't think, I think Kenneth believes direct election would make a difference. Now, we mentioned a series of worries to folks. We've done it in the past. We added to this time coming from our open list. We've, we noticed that people were being concerned about the wealth gap that has been on the horizon now for over a year. So we put it in our matrix of questions and it immediately knocked air pollution out of the top. Air pollution had always been one of the key issues. But notice also what's really interesting is the, in December 2010, concern for social unrest and street protest was much smaller than it is today. Okay. So the, if, if you talk about the wisdom of crowds, the wisdom of the hundreds of people that we've talked with, they are picking up that people are getting more and more frustrated. Maybe that's why the police are nervous. Now, we tested again this question about the money, about the budget. Okay, so you, notice, you may notice that this time we have an open-ended question that raised things about money. We've raised a bunch of questions about money and expenditures. We ask again about these various policies. Please note Almost 9 out of 10 want to increase spending on education and housing. Over 80% restarting the home ownership scheme. Increasing spending on the poor and elderly. What's really interesting here is about two-thirds of people saying, well, we'll reduce all types until the budget balances. In other words, if this government is not going to use it, at least let the people have it. Don't give it back to them. Just simply don't take it from them if you're not going to use it responsibly. But notice that that is the fourth choice out of these four, okay? Increasing salary and upper incomes, there's not even a tax the rich. Yes, a majority support it, but it's not overwhelming and it comes fifth in this list. And returning any surplus directly, barely a third, okay? Even that idea. So it's small support for that. Now, which ones would they cut or increase? They don't want to increase welfare. In other words, the wealth gap is not a call for handouts. The wealth gap, I think, is a call for opportunity to do a better job, a better job of basically allowing people to get out there and do the job themselves. How do you do that? Health, housing, protecting the environment, education, education, food safety. In other words, equipping people to do the job themselves. Massive, overwhelming support for this. People are not asking to increase the handout. Okay? The parties. This is April. Please note, this is December. If you like the color blue, there's a lot more of it back in December than there is in April. People are pretty upset about the parties, too. If there's anything that's going to suppress turnout tomorrow, it would be anger at the parties. And I think if we had two marches, and one march was anger at the government, and the other march was anger at the parties, I think you'd have a lot of people who would have some real distress about trying to choose which march to go to. Okay? And I think it's because people are angry at government 
parties who, par who participate in government, that government in general they don't feel is doing its job. It's not focusing on people's problems. It's not addressing these issues. And you can see this, this is a, about the last chart. This follows the satisfaction and dissatisfaction. We take the don't knows out to make it fairer and clearer for comparison. And we chart then positively if there's more satisfaction than dissatisfaction. Negatively if there's more dissatisfaction than satisfaction. And you'll notice that overall, even after, this is, this is in August, after the, the Constitution reform issue, we saw the Democrats for the first time in positive territory. In December, they were just under, and now they're considerably under. But then so is everybody else. And notice the CTU has just really taken a plummet. But everybody has headed down, except the one party that has not fractured, the DAB. The one party that's unified. All right. Why does this matter? If you look and put it into context, all, all governments have parties. Even if it's a one party state, they've got a party. This isn't an accident, and we could go into great detail about why this is the case. I think if you have a case without formal parties in elections, when you don't have the process of elections, it's like being in a bus without a steering wheel. It's a large object moving at speed, bouncing off obstacles, and inevitably is going to crash. No one is steering. When you don't have formal means or few means of formally expressing your views, okay, instead of this orderly procession with people who are happy to be here, instead of this, you get this. And this is Egypt and Syria and home, here, okay, China. This is what you get. And this is what we want to avoid. And that's what elections are about. Thank you. Well, thank you, Michael. Well, in the last questions, 你有這個SI的 Do you have simultaneous trans... Oh, you have. Okay, so I can speak in Cantonese. 就其實都挺頂無的 咁我見到嘅情況呢,就其實事實上,我會覺得呢,就點樣對一個所謂叫做opposition,即係一個所謂反對派嚟講呢,relatively too, uh, uh, 但如果你要有一個很強的政府的民望高的時候呢 即是外國,在西方政治熟悉,傳統智慧差不多是執政政府,民望高的時候,反對派就相對民望低,或者vice versa,執政民望低的時候,反對派就容易民望高。從這個角度,香港也很奇怪,執政民望低,但是反對民望
。咁其中一個原因咧，就頭先我所講就係即係反對派，即、就、係、是、民主派啊、泛民啊，係比較 fragmented 嘅。呢個一個重要因素。咁誒、呃，第二個因素咧，就其實呢一個亦都可能係一個市民都亦都明白，反對派咧係香港嘅反對派咧係唔會有機會執政嘅。咁所以咧，佢對即係反對派個期望咧，可能即係即係期望佢做反對嘅角色，就唔係期望佢去取代現政即係現政府嘅角色咁樣。咁呢個情況咧，我相信未來誒、呃、越去到零二去到二誒二零一七啦，或者二零二二二嘅時候咧，會唔會有一啲嘅轉變咁啦？咁當然我希望啊 ，Michael 會繼續幫我哋手做呢一個分析，一路做落去，即係究竟呢一個轉變，即、就、係、是、執政同呢一個 opposition 嘅民望高低嗰、那個相對嘅，會唔會係有一個？即係有個所謂反比嘅情況會出現到。好啦，咁啊呢兩點係我嘅 comment， 即係誒作為嘅顧問咁樣樣。咁但係我都覺得我都應該喺呢個階段裏邊，雖然咧就係、是、誒、呃、Jeff 或者即係我嘅參與係一個個人嘅獨立身份咁啦。咁但係我都覺得睇完呢份報告咧，我作為民主黨嘅副主席咧，咁我都覺得係想誒、呃、有少少 response 一兩句咁樣樣。誒、um,。我諗市民對而家個政府咧係誒嗰個誒不滿或者個失望嘅程度咧係好強烈嘅。咁誒好有冇好似阿 Michael Dick 哥嚟講講到誒出聽日嘅遊行去到十萬以上或者二十萬都唔出奇咁咧？誒，我同佢分析咧 ，in line with 即係大抵我都覺得係聽日嘅遊行咧就係相對舊年或者前年或者過去嗰兩三年咧都會係一個相對新高嘅情況。誒，我唔會覺得差異係。接近十萬，但係十萬以上，我只覺覺得都係有啲誒、呃、困難嘅嚇。但係我覺得係誒、呃、approaching ten hundred thousand 係唔難嘅，我覺得聽日都係誒、呃。但係咧，我覺得喺呢個階段裏面，如果帶翻民主派嘅頂帽嚟計咧，我哋應該要喺呢個階段裏邊咧係要守翻住，即係民主派裏邊作為副主席啦，即係民主黨副主席。我哋喺呢個階段裏邊咧，我哋要經歷過舊年同埋呢一個誒舊、呃、年，尤其是舊年嘅所謂誒誒。呃呃公投議題引申嘅即係內部分歧之後咧，其實係一個時候咧，民主派內部咧係應該要有多啲合作，就減少一啲分歧或者減少啲內部嘅矛矛盾同摩擦嘅。咁呢個咧，我相信對誒團結誒未來即係邁向全面普選係有一個積極同埋正面嘅作用喺度嘅。咁亦都，如果我哋係即係能夠民主派內部能夠更加強團結嘅時候咧，加強合作咧，係。versus 翻頭先我嘅 comment， 因為反對派唔係即係傳統智慧就執政政府民望低，反對派民望高。而我哋民望高唔到，其中有兩個原因，我自己覺得頭先所講就係一，我哋係冇機會執政；第二，我哋都係太過 fragmented 呢兩個因素。咁啊，執政呢樣嘢咧，市民亦都認識嘅，我點樣吹吹唔到嘅？即係二零一七或者二零二二。會唔會先嚟一個全面嘅真正普選咧？咁樣，但係喺短期嘅將來兩三年之間，我哋唔會有機會執政嘅。咁所以一個其中一個因素就係佢除唔到㗎啦，解決唔到㗎。第二個因素咧就係民主派能夠團結多啲，能夠可以令到個民望高啲，可以未未來兩次嘅選舉，甚至乎三次嘅選舉咧，我哋個成績會好啲咧。即係包括誒、呃、今年區議會誒、呃、特首係假嘅嚇，我清楚嘅。但係咧個立法會選舉，如果我哋能夠民主派內部合作團結啲咧，我相信呢個係互相有裨益嘅。咁呢個就係我嘅 remarks 咁樣樣，係啦。好，唔該曬善眾家人，特別係講咗好多。我講多一句之後，因為我要趕住開下一個會啊，嚇，即係我要開西舊啊，咁啊，所以三點鐘熱就道歉抱歉嚇。好多謝善眾家人講關於即係特別好多係非建制派嘅黨派嗰個嘅狀況，咁啊。我谂啊，嘉乐会唔会讲下，即系即系特别我哋讲到里边好多啲市民点样睇政府喺咨询里边啊，诸如此类。咁政府嘅管治会唔会亦都系有一啲嘅嘢要留意咧？同市民嘅互动会系点样咧？或者啊，嘉乐可以讲一讲。你想我中文定英文讲啊？中文，中文好啲啊。It's fine. Be sure about that. Because I can speak Polish if you like. <笑> EI 嘅同事咧系诶邀请我嚟到做一啲嘅啊评论同埋分享啦。咁、嗯、啊，誒、嗯，我同阿 Michael De Gaulle 咧係同事嚟嘅，即係大家都係喺浸會大學。咁佢嘅研究嘅方法，佢嘅背後嘅理據，佢嘅經驗咧，我都相信喺香港嚟講咧係首一指嘅呢方面嘅專家。咁我就唔敢咧有啲乜嘢咧係啊好大嘅批評。
，我只係希望咧係從誒、嗯、幾方面啦，可能大概三方面度咧，去就住頭先嗰個嘅誒、呃、報告咧，係做啲嘅回應啊。咁亦都咧係回應主持咧係頭先請我咧係去誒、呃、評述嘅關於香港管治所面對嘅一啲嘅問題。第一點咧就。唔用英文好困難嘅，嗰、那個字叫 paradox， 中文就叫吊鬼啊嘛。咁啊咩叫吊鬼又好難好難理解嘅，即係欲速則不達嗰種情況，嗰種感覺。呢、這個 paradox 係點樣嚟嘅咧？就係、是、我哋一方面見到咧，香港係有一個政治嘅困局喺度。呢、這個困局唔係一次嘅民意調查咧，係俾我哋睇到嘅，係。回歸以嚟十四年咧，係一直都存在嘅呢一個政治嘅困局，有多死裂，有多樽頸嘅位置。政治嘅困局當然係要用政治嘅力量去解決，係要多啲人去參與，不論係團結嘅方法，又或者係分頭進行嘅方法，始終係要參與一個政治嘅過程裏邊，去推動。政治制度嘅轉變，先至可以將頭先我哋見到嘅嗰啲樽頸嘅位置所展現出嚟，大家嗰種嘅不滿嘅情緒咧，係疏解嘅。但係呢一個嘅 paradox， 另外一面咧，正正就係好多嘅香港市民，或者係身處其中嘅政治人咧，或者政黨都係，係一展現出嗰種信任度唔高。市民對政黨嘅信任度唔高，市民對政府嘅信任度唔高，市民對政府官員、政治人物嘅信任度都係唔高。政黨或者係政治參與過程裏邊嘅活躍持份者咧 ，activists 或者 stakeholders 本身之間嘅互信咧，都喺呢個制度下邊咧係表現唔到嗰種嘅互相嘅信任出嚟。咁所以呢個就係嗰個困難嘅地方啦，即係所謂個 paradox 嘅地方就係你要集中好多嘅政治嘅能量去推動改革，但同時間，不論市民或者係自己參與喺其中嘅，大家對政治嗰種嘅希望、嗰種嘅信念、嗰種嘅信、個 faith 和 trust 其實係好低。咁呢個就係我哋見到嗰、那個嗰、那個嗰、那個問題。其實今日嘅數據或者以往我哋見到個數據咧，都係呈現咗呢一個好重要嘅現象。我諗簡單一句，我就會覺得其實我哋所有喺香港嘅人，都係喺我哋呢一個咧係唔健全嘅政治制度下邊咧，係受緊苦。誒 ，we are all victims of the system of governance that we've got in Hong Kong. That's the point. 好咧，喺開頭 Michael 俾我哋嗰個嘅誒資料上邊咧。可能大家都會諗，哇 ！Chief Executive Election 嚇，即係行政長官選舉嚟啦。咁大家想象下，我哋有投票權嚟咁樣嚇。大家試嘅即係一個一個好虛擬嘅一個一個投票嘅嘅感覺喺度。所謂嘅領頭嘅人物 Rita Fan， 佢攞到嘅支持度幾多咧？百分之二十八。咁呢個百分之二十八。如果你放喺一個正常嘅、健康嘅、開放嘅民主政治秩序裏邊，係乜嘢嘅支持度咧？你睇完之後再<笑>有冇搞錯 ？You kidding me? Twenty percent? That's it? That's the leading？ 你講笑咩？咁少就已經係咁嘅咧？有更加多嘅市民係覺得唔知啊、唔肯定啊、唔想講啊，你會感覺到嗰種。即使你喺個問卷調查或者一個虛擬嘅設計環境裏邊去鼓勵香港市民去表達一種態度，佢哋都覺得冇意思嘅、冇興趣嘅，或者唔知點算嘅。而 Rita Fan 嘅所謂相對較高，而啲過唔到三成嘅一個所謂支持度，唔多唔少係因為一個好好現實嘅，亦都係制度所引申嘅問題。佢喺呢一個名單上邊咧。佢係唯一一個清清楚楚係中央政府、北京政府係會接受嘅一個人，因為佢本人已經係人民代表大會嘅代表嚟。佢坐喺北京嘅，佢同中央好多接觸嘅
，佢係中央嘅紅人要人嚟嘅。喺個行政長官選舉裏邊，喺呢一個時刻啊，最重要嘅，如果要贏或者要得到更加多嘅啊機會去贏出咧，其實最重要嘅係中央人民政府嘅接受，最重要喺呢一刻。一般嘅市民講啲乜嘢，佢哋係冇投票權。啊，咁呢度係一個好大嘅一個落差咧，喺成個嘅制度設計上邊咧，係衍生到咧係呢一個嘅問題。我希望藉此咧係解釋一下，俾人見到嗰個圖表啊，點解會有啲咁樣嘅情況？不過呢個問卷當然可以再做嘅時候咧，呢、這個民意調查對唔住，可以再做嘅時候咧，其實可以要問多啲嘢。如果 Rita Fan 作為中央接受嘅一個重要人物，佢會話：我要為《基本法》第二十三條去立法，佢要緊跟一啲中央嘅路線，譬如話而家香港特區政府所提倡嘅要將補選嘅呢個機制係攞走。如果佢講出呢啲嘅政見之後啊，佢嘅支持度會唔會喺民喺市民心目中仲係相對較高咧？我唔肯定。因為呢一個嘅調查冇問到呢啲嘅問題，暫時都未問呢啲問題，所以我哋會見到從嗰個嘅管治嗰、那個嘅角度去睇呢一個嘅民意調查，正正再一次咧係重新見到咧香港個政治嘅困局，我哋依然咧係站在一個嘅十字路口之上，我哋依然咧係被誒、呃、有權有勢嘅誒。呃團體嚇或者組織或者一啲人物咧，係拖住我哋香港嘅政制發展。咁越拖得耐，其實會令到更加多嘅市民咧，係頭先而家見到嗰個不信任或者不滿度咧，係一路一路咁增長。咁呢個不滿度一路咁增長，我唔覺得我嘅同事 Michael Degolia 咧係嚇緊我哋，即係攞希臘啊，或者係誒、呃、埃及啊。又或者係其他地方個情，我唔覺得佢喺度危言聳聽。我覺得嗰個危機係已經係存在，亦都係三番四次我哋盡咗我哋嘅責任去話俾所有人知道呢個危機係確實存在。點解？點解個問題反而就係有權嘅唔去聽，有能力改變香港政制嘅唔去做。呢、这個正正就係我哋所見到嘅問題所在啦。啊，多謝曬。好，唔該曬嘉樂。咁我見到阿夫子阿劉瑞兆寫低咗好多嘢，我諗啊，要俾阿劉瑞兆講一講嗰、那個，即、就、係、是、對而家香港嘅狀況嘅睇法。唔該曬。多謝曬。誒、呃，我盡量好誒、呃、嘗試好精簡咁樣。講出一啲、呃、我哋睇嘅現象同埋現象嘅背後、呃，希望兩樣嘢結合，先至睇到個真相、啊嗯、就呢個報告嚟睇咧，我覺得係好多值得我哋參考嘅地方，尤其是佢裏面有啲 angle， 有啲角度咧，係一般傳統嘅誒、呃、民意調查裏面咧係冇嘅，譬如好似話。佢將一啲唔同嘅人物嗰個組合、啊、有男性女性啊，有呢、這、一個嚇誒，同、啊、埋、呃、一個人都可能係 group 落唔同嘅、呃、category 裏面嘅，咁變咗裏面咧係可以俾我哋多角度。咁呢一點嚟講，我覺得我覺得係好有參考價值嘅。咁只不過係話好多人去睇呢一類嘅民意調查咧，往往又想睇到好精簡同埋好 critical、好好關鍵嗰個趨勢。咁變咗咧，我睇落去嘅時候咧，我就有少少、呃、分散嘅感覺。咁所以咧，呢、這個我覺得係有待去繼續提高啦。咁呢個好簡單嘅啫。咁跟住我想講一個嘅就係話，而家個報告主要係喺香港人嘅角度嚟睇。未來特首，甚至上推演到二零一七嚇，如果係真係有普選嘅，嗰、那個角度點樣去揾特首，同埋市民嗰個
關心嘅程度，從而特首未來又點樣去因應嚇誒市民嗰個嘅訴求嚟做自己個部署。咁係喺一個咁嘅誒 assumption 嘅基礎上面做嘅。咁但係我到今時今日，就我即係有限嘅接觸嚇，同香港政界以至同內地啊各方面嘅朋友接觸。我到今時今日，我仲係比較懷疑香港呢一套嘅、呃、推行政治運作嘅方式同埋發展，係唔係北京願意喺未來六年裏面？所以未來六年即係包括二零一二嘅特首選舉同二零一七嘅選舉裏面。系唔系北京谂紧嗰套呢？我几怀疑噶。嗱，唔系话呢个报告唔准确，而系话如果两种思维系唔同嘅话咧，咁好可能到时到后，呃、大家会谂、啊、我希望个特首系点？特首会又又会谂，我希望啊听到选民嘅意见，然之后我点做得出嚟嘅结果呢？好可能同个真正嘅欧襟咧系好唔同嘅。大家記住一句説話，而家北京嘅演繹到二零一七嘅演繹咧，佢係講二零一七可以有普選，佢嘅語言係可以有普選。個潛台詞喺中國嘅政治文化嘅潛台詞裏邊，就係、是、如果條件成熟就可以有普選，如果條件唔成熟嘅話咧，係可以冇普選，而你哋係唔鬧得我嘅啊，因為。你你哋冇從我嘅政治文化裏面去理解我呢句説話啊嘛，係嘛？嗱咁所以呢，誒從呢一個嘅報告，我跟住呢就想誒講講，我覺得而家正話阿陳博士、阿陳家洛講，香港而家個困局啊，個政治嘅困局點解會形成呢？好簡單嘅概括，我覺得係一啲結構性問題同埋實踐性局限兩樣嘢加埋。出現嘅怪胎，嗱呢度係兩個，一個就係結構性嚇存在咗好多困難，另外一個實踐性嘅局限，即係話你有好多嘢你係困難，但係你都可以嘗試嘅，慢慢慢慢解決佢啊！但你呢兩者加埋咧，就成為咗個怪胎，得到個結果係點咧？兩大結果，一個就係市民越嚟越唔關心，甚至上討厭政治。因為大家覺得關心嚟冇效果嘛，嗱、这、呢個唔係老百姓嘅錯，係官方佢有意無意之間製造咗咁嘅效果。第二個結果就係、是、參政嘅人士，包括執政者政府啦，同埋從政嘅人士政黨啦，或者參與政治活動嘅人士啦。都冇得到真正嘅碰撞同埋磨練。嗱，你冇咗呢一個咁樣嘅實踐，真正嘅碰撞同磨練咧，自然水平就會有一定嘅局限噶。我哋可以睇翻兩岸政府，共產黨佢係經過真正嘅碰撞磨練，因為佢係從打生打死嘅角度裏面咧係打出嚟。即使而家佢哋亦都有真正嘅實踐。嚟鍛鍊佢嗰個權力嘅平衡術嘅，台灣同樣係而家基本上慢慢走向兩黨制，佢係有政治生命嘅威脅嘅。香港好可惜冇，正話善仲佳講啊，反對黨啊絕對唔會諗到可以執政，執政者亦都絕對唔會諗到喺香港裏面，佢會失去政權。因為政權阿爺俾噶嘛，中央俾噶嘛，係嘛？嗱喺咁嘅情況之下咧，政府出現嘅情況啊，睇睇咗咁多年啊，回歸以嚟十四年，我就發覺咧，其實而家咧就係球員，即、就、係、是、有一方嘅球員咧，係唔落場打波，但係佢係控制緊嗰個局面嘅，即、就、係、是、等於大家。打嗰啲足球遊戲啊，攞住支棍碌下碌下嗰啲啊，真正嘅球員係唔落場嘅，落緊場嗰啲咧唔係真正佢嚟決策嘅，啊，咁所以
。另外咧就球員咧，佢又係球證嚟嘅，一方嘅球員又係球證嚟嘅。嗱，呢啲就結構性嘅怪胎啦。啊，咁而而令到落場打波嘅人士，即係政府，佢出現咗三個能力嘅缺乏，一個就係預示能力啊，即係嗰、那個。誒、呃、force 型嗰個能力係遠遠唔足夠，因為以前港英政府喺度嘅時候咧，係港英政府做曬決策，而佢哋公務員係執行嘅啫嘛。而家北京話俾你聽，一國兩制你都係有權決策，而實際上係冇嘅，而佢哋亦都過去冇決策嘅訓練嘅。啊，而家表面上有，但係又係冇。佢哋唔會即刻我諗到，哦，我真係有決策權，而俾決策權佢嘅時候，佢又做唔到。嗱，所以第一個係缺乏咗個預示能力。你見佢執政以嚟，唔知道執政之後兩三年會發生乜嘢，所以同內地經濟上面嘅結合啊等等，係遠遠落後於形勢，落後於內地佢嘅主動性。呢、这個就係第一個。遇事能力嘅不足，第二個嘅執行能力嘅不足。所以執行能力就係你講咗啦，或者同國內、啊、大家默契咗啦。但係如何執行呢？我舉好典型嘅例子，二零零八年香港政府已經提咗所謂六大新產業。呢六個新產業其實係一九九五年已經好多人提咗。只不過係話，特區政府無論喺董建華年代或者曾蔭權年代，都冇預示住嘅、啊哦、原來香港嘅經濟係要走出嚟，所以嗰十大建議咧，全部抌埋一邊嘅。而家香港經濟唔得，跟住就喺呢啲歷史嘅垃圾堆裏面揾翻其中六項出嚟。但係揾咗啦，零八年喺施政報告裏面講咗，但係到今時今日。大家又會發覺呢六大新產業執行咗有幾多呢？甚至上佢自己本身有冇再宣傳呢六大新產業呢？冇嚇。咁、啊、所以第二個執行能力呢，又發覺好唔同，好好唔掂。第三個就係應變嘅能力啦，嗰、那個 reacting。而家就發覺呢，面對一啲突然轉變嘅形勢，以至危機，呢一批官員呢，係嗰個應變能力。都冇嘅，所以大家你可以發覺啦，而家惡嘅就可以有效果嘅，嚇、啊、呢、這個新界居民啊，或者即係而家僭建屋宇啊，跟住誒呢一個啊好、嗯、多嘅政策經過咗反對之後，又突然間修改，你就有派六千蚊嗰個過程，大家已經係睇到噶啦。咁所以咧，呢、這、一個就係、是。結構性同實踐性不足嘅情況之下，引致執政者成為跛腳鴨啦。咁呢個報告裏面亦都有講到係政黨本身嗰個嘅局限。咁我同樣係覺得原因就係正話嗰、那個、那個結構性同埋佢哋嘅實踐嘅局限，係令到香港嘅政黨同埋參政人士都難以得到磨練嘅。咁好簡單。去劃分呢一啲參政人士，無非就係建制派同埋即係誒官方稱為反對派啦。啊，民間又話泛民陣營啦，係同樣令到呢兩個陣營係冇辦法得到真正嘅磨練嘅，因為親建制派或者建制派嘅人士咧，佢係係喺庇護同埋扶持之下嚟參政嘅，佢可以透過好多個委任。譬如好似話而家局長啦、副局長啦、政治助理啦，啊，佢哋係有呢一個庇護之下去慢慢上去嘅階梯。但係如果佢哋冇真正嘅磨練嘅話咧，好典型一個人物陳克勤啊嘛，啊，佢入到特首辦，但係到到最後咧係冇辦法融入嗰個文化，從而咧佢要走出第二條路嘅。咁所以建制派裏面嘅情況咧就係、是。自己人係完全係喺温室之下，啊！你見佢好多嘅資源，民建聯而家絕絕對唔會為錢嚟愁嘅，民主派就就拗曬頭，但係佢哋絕對唔使愁嘅
啊。咁喺咁嘅情況之下咧，佢哋已經覺得未來嘅世界咧，慢慢走，只要唔出事咧，就會係佢哋噶啦。咁所以呢一個咧係形成咗，佢哋亦都攞唔出乜嘢實際嘅政績。至於反對派，佢哋得唔到磨練嘅原因咧？既因為佢哋被視為反對派，所以從資源上邊咧已經係好大嘅局限。譬如好似話民主派嘅人士花好多精神去研究好多嘅社會政策，但係大家都知道，好核心嘅數據一定係掌握政府手裏邊嘅。政府會唔會咁容易攞出嚟俾佢哋做研究咧？跟住，即使做到好多研究出嚟。但係你要轉化成為成效嘅，一定係要政府接受，或某個程度上咧，係去讓大家知道政府都願意吸收泛民或者反對派嘅意見。但係而家大家就會發覺，政府係基於北京嘅原因，基於佢哋嘅政權或者親疏有別嘅文化等等咧，係冇真正嚇去俾。呢、这、一個機會或者公平嘅機會，去俾所有嘅參政者。嗱喺咁嘅情況之下咧，我預計未來一段相對長嘅時候裏邊，香港嘅政治仍然會陷於困局。主要原因就係北京，佢喺香港佢知道政黨嘅存在，不過佢只係願意鞏固有利於佢嘅政黨。但係佢又唔能夠讓呢啲政黨，即係唔會將呢啲啊支持政府嘅政黨抌佢落鹹水海，由佢自己磨練，揾個水泡扶住佢哋，咁結果又係得唔到真正嘅即係成績嘅。咁所以我諗呢一個只能夠係靠大家再透過即係誒推動公民參與呢個過程啊！我好強調，真係要大家。公民自己覺得你自己參與咗個政治，用你自己個票起到作用，先至可以推動而家形勢嘅變化。如果唔係，我諗大家只能夠係用時間換空間，係用咁樣嘅態度。我我呢個態度唔係消極嘅，我呢個態度係結合咗現實，同埋去加強我哋自己本身嘅寄望，係咁樣之下去推動嘅。希望大家共同努力啦，多谢。好多谢阿夫子。咁啊，我谂传媒朋友都可能有啲问题，不如即系诶俾个麦依位。系、啊、南华早报嘅朋友。Um, um, more people pick the non-pan-democrat candidates. As the chief executive, they hope for than the pan-democrat candidates. This is quite different from distribution in other elections. Is there any explanation for that? And also for um, the vote by gender, like is there any explanation, any significance behind, or is it just coincidence that um, people be prefer women? Th th those are the very interesting questions, um, and, and this is the interesting. I think the terms paradox um, uh, and and also the the contradiction, you know, that that uh, Sinjin Kai was talking about. Um, it, it is very seldom that you have an unpopular government and an un un unpopular opposition in that sense. Uh, people being dissatisfied with both. Um, I think it's significant that we get these results uh, because it indicates that that people are not happy with the government and they're not happy with the way the pan Democrats are 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 doing things either. Okay, and I think this, in some ways, is a is, is a, a clear negative vote against all the uh, uh, infighting that's been going on in the pan Democratic group since the constitutional reform issue. Okay, and we all know that that's been quite quite fierce. Um, so, so I think in, in some ways they're they're linked. Women tend to be the peacemakers more than men. You know, I mean, if you go and look who's fighting, and it's mostly men. <laughs> uh, 
men still dominate when it comes to war, okay, and, and, and gang fights and all this stuff. And uh, if you are looking for people to get along and focus on problems and, you know, do something about livelihood and housing and the wealth gap, I mean, the, these, these are the kind of household issues in many ways. Uh, maybe it's because women are the ones who take care of the elderly and deal with the houses and do these other education and so forth. Uh, I think it's almost a, almost a subconscious kind of reaction, okay? Um, and that's what we're trying to do when we, when we, it's not just a simple poll, uh, what Johnny was talking about. If it was a poll, that's one thing. You can go to HKU and the POP series and you can get a poll. We're doing a survey where we're trying to understand what's going on at a deeper level. And at a deeper level, it seems to me that Hong Kong people are sending messages to our, our political establishment, and that's the parties and the government. Uh, that basically they're not satisfied with the way the system is working. The system is not working right. Okay, I think that's also why we found in earlier surveys that people supported reform. They know something's wrong with the system. And if men have been running things for a long time, and they have, maybe it's time to try women. <laughs> okay, so uh, there, that's what I think is, is, is going on at a deep level. What's that? <laughs> yeah, you keep, keep trying, you know. <laughs> if, if one way doesn't work, try something different, you know. <laughs> no, so. Okay, 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 Yes, interesting question addressed to me. Um, 這個問題我真的挺有趣的我就覺得其實大家是找緊一些合適有能力的參選人我想是否男性或者女性真的未必是大家的考慮因為其實在這個研究當中我們展現出來的其實是將一些人名根據他們的性別再重新組合而展示出來的一個效果再講一件事其實是這麼簡單的就是在研究方法裡面就沒什麼特別的理由我們就跳了去很快跳了去結論就是一定要是男性或者一定要是女性而且一定要是有立法會的背景還是有行政
，我一定會俾人鬧噶啦。咁我諗個問題係咁，即係最重要嘅喺目前嚟講係要問喺呢個咁樣嘅政治嘅格局裏邊，即係頭先劉耀兆先生所講嘅結構性嘅困難啊嘅時候，點樣樣可以突出？如果要參與嘅話，係為何而來咧？個理據係乜嘢咧？係想達到啲咩效果咧？呢、这個係好緊要。啊，如果連呢個最基本嘅誒、嗯、共識喺泛民主派裏邊咧都未揾到嘅時候，而大家就去話要參加，但係好明顯呢個係一個假嘅選舉嚟嘅。我必須要強調，呢、这個唔係一個真嘅選舉，呢、这個係假嘅選舉，因為結果已經好清楚。反對力量民主運動嘅參與係唔會有機會係勝出嘅時候，咁呢個係一個好重要嘅問題。如果連呢個基本嘅認識都立達到共識而去參與咧，我只係會見到大家咧就去參加緊，好似一個簡單嘅選美嘅活動都冇乜大嘅分別。而大家參與嘅過程裏邊，大家都知道都係一種。一種藝術嘅表達方式，咁表達完之後又點咧？咁我睇唔到，就咁樣去嘅話咧，係會對推動嗰個嘅民主運動或者推動個制度嘅改革方面咧，可以帶嚟一個好大嘅、好大嘅改變。所以我哋會，我諗作為一個一個誒市民嚟講，都希望見到先傾清楚到底你冇機會勝出嘅前提底下，你參與想達到一個乜嘢嘅？效果點樣可以推動到香港嘅政治制度嘅改變？呢、这個先至係第一個大前提，而先至之後先再講咧，係人選嘅問題咧，係會較為咧係聰明嘅做法。其他記者朋友，阿、oh. Michael 可能冇啲嘢。Just just want to end is has a lead at the moment. Uh, is in part because she has dealt with different factions in a fair manner, and as you as you can see in this survey and other surveys we've done, the issue of fairness is uh, a central issue. Uh, so dealing fairly with all the different uh, issues uh, in in society, and in this case also the collection of taxes and disbursement of expenditures, they're looking for someone who is who they perceive I think as as fairer. Uh, and when, again, whenever you look at, at kids squabbling with each other, it's usually the mother that breaks them up and makes them behave. <laughs> so, in a sense, I think again we've got this kind of—it's uh, a prejudice that comes out. It's a—it's a subconscious thing, uh, support for women in this sense. Uh, what's also very interesting about this is you might remember in in previous times, the the previous two times that we've had chief executives contest. Uh, well, I won't call them an election in deferring to to uh, Kenneth's um, uh, point. Um, But in the previous contest, uh, they, we had the so-called dream team of Dong Chihua and Anson Chan, and uh, that was a consensus. Uh, there was pretty clear support uh, in surveys uh, of a majority of people for the so-called dream team. Uh, and then last time, our survey showed that, that Donald Zhang was favored over, over anybody else. And if, it, if we'd actually had an election, Donald Zhang would have won. Um, but this time, I think what's really interesting also uh, about Uh, Rita Fan and the others not having a majority is that there's not a majority. There's no clear dream team. I think there's a few nightmare teams. Okay, I, I, I do, and I think that's why I looked very carefully at, at Donald Jung and, and Henry Tang, and whether that would actually, if Henry Tang became chief executive, would that be good for Hong Kong? I don't think so. I, I think the data shows pretty clearly that that would, you know, if you want to have people on the street. If Henry Tang is going to continue doing what Donald Jung is, has been doing, that's a recipe for trouble. Okay, it's it, it's very clear in the data. The data just screams that to me. Okay, um, so there are some things that tells us very clearly why they choose a woman. Not so clear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, so please, there, there are some things we can, uh, like Johnny talks about. There are some things we can talk about clearly, okay, and there are other things that are not so clear. It's not my fault, <laughs> okay. It's Hong Kong. It's Hong Kong people. It's the way they answer the questions, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just wanted to answer your question about the um, 
pan-democrat sending a candidate for the CE election. Since I don't belong to uh, any of the pan-democratic parties, uh, I can just only speak as a voter uh, for the pan-democratic party. So as a voter, uh, I would certainly very, very strongly urge the pan-democrats to have a process to produce a candidate. Um, because although it's a meaningless election in the end, we still have the possibility, and only the possibility, of 2017. And so now is the time, I think, and the, the process began really with Alan Leong. I think Alan entering into the last CE election made a very big difference. It made the candidate, the other candidate, have to do some work. What was interesting is he's failed on all his promises. Uh, since then, and that's very, very interesting. Um, I think a future CE candidate may well have to do better and will believe that they have to do better. Um, so I think this process is something that we should have. Uh, I think it would be even better if there was more than one person wanting to stand as a pan-democratic candidate. So the pan-democrats could have a primary election and show to the Hong Kong public that they're quite capable of entering into a sophisticated political process and can produce a candidate that they can find a way that the general public says, this is the candidate we would like to represent us. And then they can show the voting public that when it comes to 2017, there could well be a very credible pan-democratic candidate that can contest that election. Because 其他党派又如何呢現在很多黨派都是否的